thanks for coming to this session. In this session, we're going to talk about how you could deploy Docker Compose application to the AWS cloud. And more importantly, the lesson that uh, people learn uh, from uh, doing so. My name is Massimo. I'm a technologist in the AWS container team. And here with me, there is Dexter, a senior software architect at Sirius, um, uh, one of our customers. Um, what I would like to do is go through a very quick introduction and leave the stage or the virtual stage uh, to Dexter to go into more details about uh, what this technology could do for you. The way that I would like to introduce this is um, through basically uh, the theme of the event, a space, right? And the way that I want to summarize this is that you are basically here and you want to go here. Right, uh, and that's a planet. We're going to talk about the cloud, but that's kind of the idea. As a way of introduction, brief introduction, uh, this is what we're going to talk about. This is what you are usually familiar with. You have a Docker Compose file, you are on a Windows or Mac workstation, um, possibly Linux, and you basically deploy your multi container application on your uh, workstation. What we're going to talk about here is advancement and uh, new technologies that Docker is building to allow you to use the very same Docker file, but instead of uh, deploying locally on your workstation, uh, you will be allowed to deploy in the AWS cloud. And Dexter is going to talk in more details um, about this. Before I leave the stage to uh, Dexter, a couple of reasons why people and customers would like to do this. Well, there are two major uh, reasons. Uh, the first one is because the Docker Compose syntax is very simple, but yet super powerful, right? I love the Docker Compose syntax because it allows you to do um, a number of things uh, without introducing a lot of complexity. The second reason for which this may be interest to you is the fact that there are lots of Docker Compose files out there that are looking for a new planet or um, uh, destination, so to speak, uh, and the cloud is a natural destination for containers these days. So uh, the, the power of AWS with the power of Docker Compose together um, you know, to um, get to that point. Without Further ado, I'm going to leave the stage to Dexter and um, and get into more details about the technology and uh, his experience working with the technology. Over to you, Dexter. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dexter, and I'm a software engineer working for Sirius XM Pandora. And I'm here with Massimo and the AWS team to do a presentation on Docker Compose um, a tool that we started exploring and eventually using to streamline and simplify our container deployments on Amazon ECS infrastructure. I will show you the basic ideas, uh, the project that we started using it on, and a tour and a demo of how we exactly we use the tool um, to realize the project. I hope you guys learned something from it. So we're here to introduce the use of Docker Compose tool, not only as a tool that is known for deployment of uh, containerized services on-prem, but we're also going to use the same tool for deploying your containerized services in the cloud, specifically AWS ECS Docker Container Services. So um, I work for Sirius XM Pandora, um, as you know, it's one of the largest entertainment streaming providers in the United States and Canada, home of the venerable Howard Stern. Um, most of our cloud infrastructure, um, I mean, we use a lot of cloud providers, um, but most of our cloud infrastructure is hosted by Amazon Web Services. Um, most of our streaming services are, are backed by APIs running microservices uh, on the JVM, specifically Scala and Java. And um, most of them are running on uh, 
Docker ECS platform. As for myself specifically, I'm I'm a developer. I'm a code monkey, and I would like to say to, to, to introduce myself as this cool cat and say I work on Emacs on terminal command line tools, but we all know that's a lie. And just like everyone else, uh, I use IntelliJ with Stack Overflow to, to fulfill my job. It's more like Stack Overflow with IntelliJ, but let's not go there. We're already running uh, several mic microservices with hundreds of dock containers, like I said, mostly on AWS using ECS technology. And in order to facilitate this, uh, we have been using CloudFormation and Troposphere um, for infrastructure as code and for continuous integration and continuous deployment. Uh, we have been using JetBrains Team City. So uh, it works pretty well, but as like you know, just like any um, software development house, well, we try to um, come up with ideas, come up with strategies in order uh, for us to to streamline our development, streamline our deployments, and eventually which leads to being able to scale better and be more reactive depending on what are the needs of not only by the business, by the product, and by the customers. In order to make things better, um, we have identified what we think we need to make things faster and more efficient. So um, one of the, the obvious things is that like I said, it has worked so well for us, CloudFormation with Troposphere. But when you do it six, seven, eight, nine, ten times or even more, working with CloudFormation can be a little bit tedious. Like, you know, a lot of it is verbose, even with most of the stuff migrated from JSON to YAML, which is m more readable. Um, it always presents itself with a steep learning curve. Um, unless you're very well burst, versed already with the AWS ways of doing things. Like, uh, so that's a challenge for, for us, not only for the existing engineers, but especially with onboarding um, some of the new members of the team. The second uh, thing that came up was that um, while we still have a lot of our footprint in AWS, we also started deploying services again on prem. And we wanted to use something that is like, you know, a tool that could make things that is portable, uh, meaning the same tool that can be used not only on the cloud, but also on prem. And um, we'll, we'll show later, like, how Docker Compose fits into all that. Um, and lastly, um, which I think is, as, again, as a developer, is, is uh, uh, very important um, for the efficiency of the whole process. And um, what I mean is that it will be nice if we, we are using the same set of tools for running the container in my local development machine um, and it's the same manner of and tools are, that are used in um, deploying these services in production. Or not necessarily exactly the way it is, but at least get close to it. Um, so again, hopefully in the next few minutes, the use of, we'll show you how Docker Compose has made all of these possible. So for the guinea pig project, or like, you know, the first time we're going to use this new set of tools, um, we, like, you know, we came up with the, with the project that we, that, uh, which we think Docker Compose fits 
very nicely. And the particular service that we have uses um, specifically Envoy and Spring Cloud Gateway. Um, we are also using Redis in conjunction with these two services, but like you know, that's not actually part of the Compose um, strategy because like we needed something Redis to be distributed. So in AWS, um, we are using Elasticash and in on-prem, we're, pl we're planning to use something like uh, Redis cluster or a similar strategy for a more resilient um, uh, cache, distributed cache. So um, like I said earlier, um, we are mostly an API shop. So we start with the client. Um, client meaning uh, the mobile apps, the cars, vehicles, um, the web, um, web browsers, and devices like Sonos or the Bose, um, Bluetooth and smart speakers, um, and along with Alexa and Google Home and all that, right? So it starts with them, so they'll be needing ways to, to get the um, artist metadata, music metadata, the available episodes on a podcast, um, the live channels, the Howard Stern um, episodes, and all the discoverable shows and um, recommendations based on um, your listening preferences or your listening history. So a lot of those are fronted by a facade and, and are broken down into these multiple microservices that serve specific tasks. And again, the combination of these microservices will present itself as a single unified API for the clients to use. And for this project that we, that we, that we are working on, um, we, are, um, we opted to use Envoy, which is becoming more popular for service mesh and for this kind of use case. The thing is, Envoy is great. It does a lot of things out of the box, circuit breaking, caching, and some level of uh, uh, um, customized filter by having Lua, embedded Lua scripts in them. Again, great. So it, it does like a lot of things for us out of the box, but it doesn't do everything. So for our use case, uh, we needed to have to augment it with something for um, to, 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 to be able to do something like lookups and some circuit breaking based on business rules rather than specific HTTP codes. Um, and for that, we use Spring Cloud Gateway. So um, Spring Cloud Gateway, as you know, it's a, it's pretty much the same technology, but using JVM services. So have, having the, 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 the team mostly well versed with the JVM language, if we needed to do something like, like extending the, the capabilities of Envoy, um, we are making it happen within Spring Cloud Gateway. So the way it works is that both Envoy and Spring Cloud Gateway work as one service. So from the point of view of the client and the microservices, you, all you see is this one super router that does the back and forth of data between the client and the API. So how has Docker Compose makes these things better? Um, first of all, um, it takes advantage of um, AWS ECS, like almost out of the box. And this is without having to know too much about AWS load balancers, networking, security groups, and DNS, and all of that indicate parts of deployment services. Um, because for the most part, like especially with developers, we don't really care too much about that. We just need to have like you know some abstraction to represent that we have two services 
we want those two things, two or more services to work together. And Docker Compose has made a great job of having that abstraction. Second, um, since you need to abide by the rules of what the Docker Compose syntax provides, uh, from, from my standpoint, you are, it's less error prone, right? So um, with, with cloud, just pure cloud formation, as you know, I mean, given how, how it could be really tedious and really slow, you, um, you, you don't have disadvantages here. But having said all of that, um, with Docker Compose and with the recent introduction of um, what Amazon calls CloudFormation layering, um, you still have this ultimate level of control where you can just pepper in like, you know, um, CloudFormation scripts within the Docker Compose file itself. So um, you are not limited by the constraints of what Docker Compose DSL provides out of the box. You can always extend it with CloudFormation as you see fit. So with these, um, uh, so the Docker Compose has been great. Like, you know, it worked for us, like for the, 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 the Guinea project that we, we have has been working fine. It runs on AWS, no problem. But uh, it still presents some some challenges, and um, and would like to have this addressed in the in the near future. Docker Compose for ECS is still somewhat of a, a young project, so we are confident that a lot of this will be addressed. Um, first of all, I mean. I mean, out of the box, right? Like, you know, the, the, the basic DSL doesn't give you some options of the security aspects of the service, right? I mean, of course, you can always um, use CF layering to, to, to facilitate all that. But, you know, if you find yourself customizing the Docker Compose too much with CF CloudFormation layering, this may not be the appropriate tool for the job. However, um, don't get me wrong, um, for the most common use cases, um, I still think that it is good enough uh, replacement for something like Terraform or CloudFormation with uh, Troposphere. And obviously, or if it's not obvious enough at this point, um, uh, Docker Compose for ECS, behind the scene, it's still all CloudFormation. So it's kind of slow. So it's the nature of the beast. So that's, we have to, uh, to deal with that. Okay, so we're here for the best part or the worst part, the demo. Okay. Um, so w w what you see right now is a, is our Docker Compose file that we use for deploying the two services that I mentioned, Envoy and Spring Cloud Gateway um, in AWS. So um, it's using version three. Um, the, you have the familiar um, settings for um, your container services. Uh, in, in our case, this is proxy is our Envoy service, SPG is the Spring Cloud Gateway. So um, you have the ports, uh, the environment, like meaning like, you know, the environment variables. And these are the, the CPU and memory settings. Um, since we are using Fargate as a host container, container host, um, you can specify the parameters here that's within the Fargate host limit. Um, and in addition, in addition to that, um, you have the same logging capabilities. And in this case, you also take advantage of 
CloudWatch for logging all of the services. Um, you specify the log group, the region, and the stream prefix of the of the service that you'll be using as it writes to CloudWatch. So the thing, a couple things to note here, right? So any extensions that is specific to AWS are um, specified using this X dash AWS whatever, right? Um, in this case, since you, uh, at the end of the day, the services dip are deployed in ECS, so you need to specify the cluster and the VPC of where it will be deployed. And you specify it here using these two parameters. And subsequently, things like policies needs to be uh, assigned to those since you'll be using IAM roles to, to facilitate the communication and the whatever is the, the services that are being created um, within the cloud formation stack. So you specify that here. As for the image, um, the same standard image um, parameter that is used in, blo uh, in um, Docker Compose, that's where you specify your ECR URL here. Um, one thing to note here is that for our Docker ECR images, we always name it with two unique things. One is this part is the git hash of the code that is uh, incorporated, like, you know, that builds this service. And second is the, the SH SHA-1 hash of the configuration for that service. So we have multiple configurations, like one for development, one for QA, and one for production. And we're not using a mono repo, so um, the, the, the configuration is, the, is pulled in from another repository. And this, this is important, actually. Because since again, since we're using CloudFormation, if you don't, if you change something within your image, but you don't change any of the things within this um, Docker Compose file, um, CloudFormation will refuse to deploy it because it thinks that nothing has changed in the in the CloudFormation stack. So that needs to be. Uh, incorporated here and like right now you're looking at the, the docker compose file as of like some static configuration these are actually auto generated within the build process of uh, in gradle so now that you've seen what it looks like right so now you have the i can show you that like i said this is all cloud formation behind the scenes and for that, so if you you can you can switch um, you have Docker Compose LS uh, to to show you what the contexts are because this is the magic the magic sauce of like differentiating whether you're doing it locally or on ECS. So you need to con convert, you, you, you need to switch context. And in this case, I already in the ECS context. So any Docker Compose done here will be in the context of deploying it within ECS. And um, like I mentioned, since Docker Compose is cloud formation behind the scene. You can actually see the equivalent cloud formation script of that same compose file by issuing Docker Compose convert. So you can opt to just use that to deploy in AWS using the regular cloud formation stuff. So a couple of things, um, last things that I want to show you as part of this demo is that um, 
like I said in the beginning, or in the beginning, we use Team City to automate the, the deployment of these things. So here you're looking at the output of of Team City for this particular uh, build definition that runs Docker Compose and deploys everything into ECS. You'll see that within the logs itself that it's executing CloudFormation commands on the fly, and you'll see it as you deploy this on the cloud. I'm not going to go through like you know the actual deployment because it's since it's CloudFormation, it's kind of slow. It would probably take like five minutes just showing you that. So I'm not going to go over that. And lastly, since again this is CloudFormation, right? So once you run that using uh, using the Docker Compose up, you'll see that same CloudFormation stack forming here. So now coming from Docker Compose, you know if you're you've been well versed with CloudFormation, now you're back in the familiar arena arena, and you're seeing CloudFormation artifacts being generated. Um, and then from there, looking at these, you can you can see within ECS. Um, If you, in our case, we specify the the cluster as Blue Sky Dev, so it's the same. Like you know, the the artifacts that are created using CloudFormation that are generated using CloudFormation Docker Compose is the same stuff that you'll see here. And so you get the best of both worlds essentially. The ease of Docker Compose, but the full backing of CloudFormation. Hopefully it has been clear to everyone that uh, with Docker Compose, um, you have now the, the ability to somewhat simplify and make a, a more unified approach of deploying your services within on-prem or in the cloud using the same set of tools. And with Docker Compose and AWS, it, they, it, they made it in such a way that you're still within the familiar realm because at the end of the day, Docker Compose and AWS is CloudFormation. And that concludes our presentation on Docker Compose with ECS. Uh, like I mentioned, the tool is still relatively in its infancy and it's still evolving. But it shows a lot of promise. Um, so I hope you guys start adapting it in your own projects so we can make it even better thank you very much and now we hand you over back to massimo for his final thoughts thank you dexter uh, that was great uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience uh, with the audience and with all of us uh, to the audience uh, should you be interested in what you heard from us and specifically from dexter and what he was able to accomplish using uh, this integration, um, my call to action is to get started right now. You only need the latest version of Docker Desktop uh, for the software uh, requirements and an AWS account, an active AWS account. What i showing here on this slide are a couple of links. One is the official Docker uh, documentation uh, for this integration. And the second one is a blog post that we wrote um, to um, make it easier for you to get started and it's a walkthrough that you can use to get started. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any question to both myself and Dexter, um, if you have any uh, specific question or uh, doubt or concern. Uh, with that being said, thank you very much for sticking around and have a great DockerCon.